is the name that we use. And if you want to be a really good Christian, why don't you use the word that Jesus used? And if you don't believe me, believe Mel Gibson. <laughs> okay, next word. I told you I had a couple of words. Next word. Islam. What does Islam mean? Well, you could ask a Muslim, or you could ask some people in the media, or a politician, or a preacher. Let's go ask a preacher. Mr. Preacher, what does Islam mean? Islam means terrorism, boy. Get away from them guys. Whatever you do, don't read that book. That's exactly what my friend told me. He used to carry a big cross down the street, down the town. Yeah, that's what he told me. I'm not joking. He told me. Stay away from them, boy. They're a bunch of perks. Hijackers, kidnappers, and they in God. They worship a black box in the desert and kiss the ground five times. That's something. <laughs> Anyhow. The word Islam, the word Islam actually doesn't have a translation. That's why if you look through the Quran, you never see this word translated. All the other words they'll try to translate. Like I said, Allah, they say God. By the way, I, I missed one part of that. How can you distinguish God, which is anything worship, G-O-D in the dictionary, anything that worship is a God, a rock, stick, stone, a bone, all of those things are worshiped. Therefore, they're all gods. Everybody's got gods, some kind of God. The ones that don't believe in that God, they believe in the money God, you know? Right or wrong? Somebody got a God, right? So how do you distinguish any old God with the one and only God? Well, you use a big G. Huh? Hey! <laughs> You know what's wrong with that? Semitic languages don't have capital letters. And besides that, what if you start the word, the sentence with that word God? You got to put a big G. Then I don't know what you're talking about. Huh? And when you're talking to somebody, they can't see it. And then you're talking about, well, you know, the other day I saw this guy worship against God. <laughs> but me, I only worship my God. <laughs> a big G. So you can't make that distinction. So let's go back again and look. What about this word? Islam. The reason they can't translate it is because it would give away the whole secret. This is one of the best kept secrets on the planet today. What is Islam? Now let's ask the Muslim, what is Islam? Islam is peace, brother. We love everybody. We're tolerant. No problem. <laughs> Sorry, but that doesn't work either, does it? Fact is, it doesn't mean peace. Does not mean peace. If you thought it did, get a new thing going. How many Muslims? Let's put it up again. I'm just making sure it's still away. Put the other hand up. How do you feel now? Is it better? <laughs> Your deodorant failed. You put it down. All right. Anyway. <laughs> Did you ever see a Muslim walk up to each other and say, Islam alaikum? <laughs> no. We say, Salam alaikum, don't we? So Islam doesn't mean peace. Get off of it. Wake up. I mean, you know, spend a little time with the Maori, the dictionary. Open it up and look. Islam is the surrender, submission, obedience, and sincerity, and peace with the law. First of all, you surrender your will to the will of Almighty God. Number two, you submit to His commandments. Number three, you obey them to the best of your ability. And then number four, you do it in sincerity and stop. Hold on. Don't move. Don't move. I see you moving over there, by the way. <laughs> Think. Sincerity. Did you not hear what Suhaib Webb was talking about? Can you force people into an intimate relationship, something where they're going to feel good about somebody. I want you to feel good about me. I mean, now, boy! <laughs> How can you change somebody's feelings? Can you? You can try all day long, but hey, if you doubt what I just said, go to the divorce court and watch. It ain't happening. Think. Sincerity. If I have to be sincere to do Islam, then Islam cannot be spread by any kind of force. 
Sword or AK-47, either one. Doesn't work. You can spread ideologies. You can spread civilizations, all kinds of concepts under force, but you can never force Islam. La ikraha fiddin. There is no compulsion in the way of Islam. Allah said that in Surah Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 256. And then after that comes the word peace. And you have to be in peace with Allah. After you did the other four, be in peace with whatever comes to you. Because this life is a test for you. That's why we see that things happen in the world that we see today. The atheist says he doesn't want to believe because he sees hardship. He sees strife. He sees calamities, trials, and tribulations everywhere he looks. Oh my God, tsunamis, hurricanes, tornadoes. Oh, cyclones over here. Ah, volcanoes going off over there. Whoa, must be no God. Huh? For us, it proves there's God because he said in the Quran, that's how he punishes people and tests them. 1400 years ago, he described that we would be talking about earthquakes. Zalzala, yes or no? And the Prophet ﷺ prophesied in the last day there'd be so many earthquakes, even Saudi Arabia, even the place where the Kaaba is, is going to be affected by earthquakes. That's a good place to build tall buildings, isn't it? Duh. Anyway, anyway, we here in California know a little bit about earthquakes, yes or no? And I got just down to San Diego a couple of weeks ago, just in time, didn't I? <laughs> earthquake City. One of our websites features this about earthquakes. If you want to keep up with what's really going on, there were over, I think, 1,800 earthquakes just in a few days on the planet. Most of you never even heard about it. Didn't even think about it. Went out about your business. Didn't even, didn't care. But if you want to know about them, go to islamnewsroom.com. On the left side of the page, look and it says earthquakes. Click it and keep up with it because it updates every few minutes showing you where the earthquakes are. You can see the graphics showing you where they are, how big they are, and how recent they were. Some that one hour, some 24 hours, and the others will show you the one week, up to one week. And the planet's loaded with them all the time and it increases not only in numbers but in intensity. Islam itself. We as Muslims understand Islam to be a way of life from the time we're born to the time we die, from the time we get up in the morning to the time we go to sleep at night. We understand Islam to be our way. It is our deen. It is what we do. And the people of the book should look at their book real close and observe that after the four Gospels in the book of the Acts of the Apostles, this is the fifth book of the New Testament, look in there in chapter 11 and see what Paul said about the people of Jesus. The real people of Jesus never called themselves Christians. No, they didn't. They called themselves people of the way. And it's capitalized. W-A-Y. Not that they capitalized it, but the translators recognized that it was a proper noun. They were called Ahudim, people of the way. How many in this room hope and pray that we are from the Ahudim? So we want to be just like the early Christians, don't we? Ahudim, following the way. What way? The way of all the prophets, to worship that one God I just talked about. To do what he wants us to do, on his terms. Not worshiping the prophets, not worshiping the messengers, Putting them in a high status, saying only good about them, not like some people did. But showing the proper honor to them, respect to those prophets, and following that way. Ahudim. The last and the final prophet of all, Muhammad Sallallahu told us that he was bringing the same message that every other prophet brought before him. And said that there will be no prophet after him. Allah said the same thing. Very clear in Surah Al-Hasab, telling us that the Prophet Islam is, is not the father of any of your men, but he is the Khatam al -Anbiya. He's the seal of all of the Prophets. So for us, we understand that he just came as a man, lived as a man, died as a man, and told us that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, would be back in the last day, even we know he's going to be in Syria. Is that a coincidence that the only people left on this earth that speak the language of Jesus are still right there in Syria? Ha! Huh? Or did we stack the deck? Made a deal with Mel Gibson or something? Think about it. Before you criticize Islam, you better look real hard. 
Because go back to your Bible and read twice in the New Testament when, according to what you got in the English language, it tells you a prayer called the Lord's Prayer. When you pray, pray thus. The only word we got a problem with is Father. We don't say Father. We say God. We say Lord. But we don't compare our relationship with Allah to a father much greater than that because that would be leaving out the mother, wouldn't it? And who did all the work? The mother. Stop and think about it. We're giving the credit to the one that Jesus prayed to. Did Jesus pray? And if he did, who did he pray to? And when you pray to him, what is that all about? And if you say he's God, he never said that. Not in any of the most corrupt translation of any Bible I ever saw did it ever really say that. You've got to take something that's said and then try to fit it around like that. Get, uh, don't you, you know, when you read, don't let the Holy Ghost tell you what, what to believe something. Uh-huh. I went through all that. But to come back to this subject, the Lord's Prayer tells us, and we will accept it as Muslims in meaning at least, with that one change. I'm going to say, Oh Father, but we'll say, Oh God, which art in heaven. We believe that. Puma astawa ala arch. We believe that. Hallowed be thy name. We know Allah's names are all sacred. We defend that. His asma was the father. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. That's what Islam means. Do God's will on earth. As it is in heaven. Give us this day our rizq. Our daily bread. Nobody else can give it to us but Allah. We believe that. He's always up. And forgive us our sins. And we forgive those who sin against us. This is the way of a Muslim. Don't lead us into temptation. Deliver us from evil. A'udhu Billah. We say it all the time. A'udhu Billah before we read the Quran. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah forever and ever and I'm going to say Amin because that's the way we say it Amin may Allah wake us up and guide us to see what is right and what is wrong the first of our speakers talked to the Muslims directly about what's wrong with us and what we need to do to correct it our sister talked to us about what is right about real love and what it means and how we put it into practice in this world and I'm talking to you as Human beings, all descendants of Adam, one person, we all came here. As we said in the beginning from the Quran itself. And Allah is telling us, and I'll remind you, in chapter 49, when Allah is telling us that He brought us all from one single person. From that one person, the one that He brought His mate from, is still one person, Adam and Eve, and from them created many tribes and many nations and made them different. Allah said He made us different. So we can recognize each other. But the most beloved to Allah, the most honorable in the sight of Allah, is the one who him, submits to Him, obeys Him, is sincere with Him, and at peace whatever Allah gives them. And that's called Islam. Think about it. And I'll leave you as I greeted you in the beginning and ask that Allah bestow upon you the very best of this life and the best of the next life. This is my prayer for all of us. Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullah. Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam Rasulullah. Salaamu Alaikum, you're still here. I didn't bore you to death yet. I'm back. And by the way, we got to the point where we do the question and answers. And you look like a pretty progressive group out here. You, got, you guys are pretty modern, aren't you? Huh? You're modern, right? You're not old-fashioned, right? Anybody here is not old? Is anybody old-fashioned here? Huh? Anybody? Get out of here. <laughs> All right. So we're going to do it a little bit different. What we're going to do, you see, I'm going to ask you the questions. You're going to give me the answers, okay? First question. Yeah. If a hen and a half lay an egg and a half and a day and a half, how long does it take a rooster to lay a hard-boiled egg on a brass doorknob? Eh, wrong answer. You should have phoned a friend. You don't like that game. Okay. Okay, I got another game. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We'll do it this way. You see what you do? Give me the answer.